pilgrimage. When most Americans hear the word, they think of the Europeans who traveled to America. But there is one pilgrimage that is far older than the settling of America, and close to 100,000 pilgrims make the journey every year. Hola, love Spain. Hello. Sevilla, capital Andalusia. Thinking about all of the mil literally millions of pilgrims that have done the Camino before me. Um, you know, over the course of a thousand years, there's been millions of pilgrims that have done it. The Camino de Santiago is a spiritual journey that originated around 900 AD. Catholic pilgrims from all over Europe traveled to Santiago to pay their respects to the patron saint of Spain, Saint James. It was during the Middle Ages when the Camino peaked in popularity. It was said that during that time, if you paid your respects to St. James' tomb, you would be allowed into heaven. Since then, the pilgrimage has died in popularity, but people still make the adventure to be enlightened and seek changes in their lives. How come you decided to come on this adventure? Uh, lots of reasons, really, but the, the most recent one is that I did something really bad, and I thought, well, if I'm gonna walk for 800 kilometers, I might sweat it out of my system or something like that. Uh, the reason I have come here is that I have a lot of problems and that's why I can't think of myself again here, so I decided to come here. And so you're trying to uh, avoid these problems or...? Not avoid this problem. Uh, you know that uh, during this journey I can't think of myself again and again and again and then I can pop up thinking and some method to solve this problem, that's why. Some people make the journey to be enlightened and learn about themselves, while for others, the motivation is simpler. Punto y aparte. So this is like a stop. So you stop and then you, you start again with a different mind. Yeah, restart. This is a refresh in my life. Yeah. Well, this is the second time uh, that I'm walking the entire Camino. The first time was in the fall of 2008. And uh, I'm not sure I ever had a, a particular reason other than uh, that I just needed a break figured that I might find the reasons along the way. Well, my adventure started actually 16 years ago. Um, I really wanted to do this Camino from the age of 14. Um, I guess, like many Brazilian people, um, I read the Paulo, Paulo Coelho book, um, which is the, the Camino, uh, the pilgrimage. Just like Roberta, many people are influenced by popular stories of the Camino, like Martin Sheen's The Way. Because of influences like the way, more and more nationalities are coming on the Camino, but not just for religious enlightenment, but for recreational purposes too. Um, well, I had always kind of thought about doing it. Um, you know, I saw the movie The Way, and you know, I like that movie. Um, you know, not the best movie ever, but kind of the idea of the Camino kind of got that started thinking in my head. Some people are so moved by the stories, they plan on going on the Camino years? Well, I read about it in the newspaper probably three years ago, and I mentioned to my husband that that might be a great trip for us to do something we thought we might like, uh, but it would have to wait until we're retired. While some do it for vacation, others go on the Camino to challenge themselves. Um, so I am actually in training. Um, I want to be a nomad. Or it's like a vagabond, you know, a vagrant, and uh, it's basically like the Camino, but it's the Camino for life, and it's around the world, and uh, doing the Camino to train for that big, you know, kind of trip. Some pilgrims make the trek because of life decisions, while others were just in the right place. Uh, last September, I got a job working, actually teaching English in Santiago of all places. And so it kind of got me thinking like, all right, you know, I really do want to do this. I've lived in Santiago for a year. It's only fitting that I do the Camino and that's what made Santiago so famous in the first place. And, and in fact, where I lived in Santiago, I was a 30 second walk from the Pilgrim Museum. Uh, and I could actually hear the bells for the Pilgrim Mass from my window on Sunday morning. So it just only made sense, it felt right. No matter what the reasons are for making the trek, everyone can find something to catch their heart along the way. Whether you prefer mountainous peaks capped in snow or low valleys filled with vineyards, this adventure has it all. 
what was incredible to me is, is so each day you're hiking maybe 25, 30 kilometers. And in, the, in one day you might wake up, and I remember there was one stretch where we woke up and it was this complete desolate area. It looked like the, Sahara, the savanna in Africa, just shrubland, nothing was really growing there, just dry, brown, almost desolate, very few people live there. And by 20, 20 kilometers into that day, we had hiked up a mountain, um, gone to the top of the mountain, so the scenery is completely different. Then we crossed that mountain the same day, and you know, on the other side, it was just like, not a paradise, but it almost was. It was green, verdant, you had fruit trees everywhere, people with gardens, and so that was just unbelievable to me. In the span of 30 kilometers, it was a completely different world. And that happened on countless occasions. There were very few days where you, where we would hike an entire day or two days straight, and there wasn't some major uh, shift in the way the, the landscape looked. The Camino de Frances starts at Saint Jean Pied de Port in French Basque Country. After hiking over the Pyrenees, the pilgrims enter Navarra Country with rolling hills and dry farmland. Leaving the hills, the pilgrims enter dry, arid deserts through the Castilla and Leon Country. Has any of the scenery blown you away as well? Oh yeah, especially around uh, well Pyrenees and Navarra. Um, and uh, now, after walking all this uh, desert, <laughs> from Burgos to Astorga, uh, I can see that uh, there's a light in the end of the tunnel again, and everything is so amazing. I'm just really chuffed about all this, and I'm sure this is really the spiritual journey starting now, so I'm really looking forward to that. The journey ends in Santiago, in the territory known as Galicia which is known for its rainy weather and lush rolling hills and valleys. This territory is perfect for breeding livestock. Now when I came to Galicia after Castilla León because everything was brown and you get used to the road and the way was pretty tough and now all this green just shocked me. That's the final, yeah. So, but also the first walk, it's always like that. Camino starts with the first step and the first step was the Pyrenees, so I think you have them in your heart too because it's the first day and it's great so the nicest area i think is really here in galicia it's so beautiful even if the weather is not as well as somewhere else and the pyrenees they were pretty amazing i think uh, in galicia i have felt the energy when you're walk, uh, when you're walking through a forest i feel the energy i can breathe fresh air and it makes me feel better. The geography is breathtaking, but it's not the only thing that will leave a lifelong impression on you. There have been two, two views that have kind of like, they haven't necessarily changed my life, but they just, they've blown my mind in a way. Um, there was one, it was, a, it was a sunset, no, it was a sunrise. Uh, I was walking around and uh, I turned around and uh, I saw these clouds and they were just bright red and they had like a purple hue to them. And there was the sun right behind it and light rays were coming from the sun, like in between the clouds. And it had, it's something uh, somebody told me, it's called the hand of God. So you kind of, the hand of God effect. So I saw the hand of God. While some people know exactly what captivated them the most, like Eric, for others, there is too much to choose from. What has been your favorite part about this? The churches or the landscape, the city? Oh, that's kind of hard because everything plays into everything. The churches are unbelievably amazing. Uh, the landscape, I loved walking through the vineyards and the olive groves and seeing all the wildflowers and the sunflowers. It's just the whole experience is really worthwhile, yeah. For some, it's not what goes on around them, but the solitude they can achieve while walking that is most precious to them. The yeah, Camino is for walking and sightseeing is also great part of Camino, but I think walking is uh, crucial and most important reason is I can think while I walk. I can think about myself and my life and my future. 
maybe my hobbies or my girlfriend, my family, and it is very good opportunity. Ah, lo que más me gusta de la soledad de cuando vas caminando tú solo. De la soledad de cuando estás tú solo caminando. Sí, va a estar contigo mismo, sin más. Some pilgrims find peace in walking alone, while others enjoy the companionship of newly acquainted friends. I'm on the Camino is a melting pot that brings people together whose paths would otherwise have never crossed. All pilgrims, regardless of income, nationality, age, and beliefs, have to walk the same path. There is no upper or lower class. Everyone is equal from start to finish, all 800 kilometers. We can, we can meet so many kinds of people during this journey. In my case, I have met a French journalist, actor, and even um, you documentary uh, <laughs> maker. So I think that is so nice. It's hard to explain it. It's first you are with yourself and with your thoughts and your thinking. Then you meet other people, uh, talk to them. Then you find out how to help. Maybe them. they help you and. It's not too often, especially when you live in the city, to see so many people doing the same kind of thing. Like, very like-minded, and we all have one kind of path, so everybody's nice. And you meet some Italians sometimes, and but uh, yeah, I mean they're okay. No, <laughs> she's great. No, but yeah, you just meet uh, so many different kinds of people. They all have a different story, and uh, it's great to hear every one of them. You know, and these are friendships I'm gonna have probably the rest of my life. You know, these are people I can go visit in Germany and Poland and. Sweden, um, and so I really, really cherish that getting to know people from around the world. So that's really hard if you live in the United States, getting that, uh, getting exposed to people from from all these other places. When these bonds are made, each pilgrim expects each other to finish together and celebrate at the end of the Camino in Santiago. But unfortunately, the Camino is a grueling 800 kilometer journey over mountains and through whatever weather may occur. Rebecca and her friend Son had to cut their adventure short when Son was hit with an awful case of blisters and couldn't keep going. Some can't endure the physical pain and have to go their separate ways. The Camino is like anything in this world that is beautiful. You can't have the rose without its thorns. Some find out the way wasn't for them, while others find the strength they never knew they were capable of. I, I just thought it would be uh, kind of a, a great way to see Spain at first. But as we go along, we're finding there's more to it than that. Because even though you're exhausted, your feet hurt, and you're hot. Um, you, you just, for myself and for my husband, we find we, do, we just can't quit. We can't, because it would be uh, letting ourselves down. I didn't know if I can actually do it, walking the whole one, and then it turns out that I can do it, and so I'm very thankful for every step I made here. Some pilgrims found strength they didn't know existed, while others were humbled by their body's limitations. Well, I guess I learned maybe that I'm stronger than I thought I was, and also that I'm not as strong as I thought I was. Because, you know, doing the Camino, walking 30 kilometers a day, and feeling like pretty, pretty tired, pretty, really, really tired at the end of it, and seeing like a, you know, 45, 50 year old woman doing the same thing, and it's just like, dang, like, how is she not dead right now? Um, because I'm struggling. The Camino is more than just having physical endurance. Mental toughness is also a necessity. Those who embrace the pilgrim lifestyle may find it soothes the soul. 
I, you kind of have to learn to like to, to be resourceful and also that you don't necessarily need to be connected to technology all the time. And I, I was on my phone, but really only to, to, uh, to post pictures on Instagram and stuff like that to kind of keep my, my family and friends kind of in the loop. But other than that, you know, I, I didn't feel the need to like check my Facebook and check my email constantly. And so that was kind of cool to kind of to get away from that, which is really tough you know, in today's society. No matter what the pilgrims learned on the Camino or what captured their hearts, one thing that was consensus while meeting all the pilgrims is that the adventure is one that will last with them for a lifetime. Well, I never walked the Camino uh, to write a book about it, uh, but after a year of returning, uh, so many people were asking me uh, stories and uh, of the Camino and asking me so many questions, and I, I'm a professional speaker, and some of the Camino stories uh, found their way into my presentations. And so one day, uh, a friend of mine came to my office and said, you need to write uh, this book. And I spent the next 12 months writing uh, this book, and I've never been more proud of anything in my career.